every serious competitor or performer, even if a person's not an athlete, maybe you're a speaker or even someone who's giving a, a best man speech, made of honor speech, right? You're in some kind of performance setting. A student is taking a test, the SATs. We have a pre-performance checklist, making sure you're doing those things. And it's gearing your mind towards away from the outcome, not focusing on winning or losing your statistics, the records, the rankings, the seedings, the predictions, all that stuff. Forget about it. Throw that out. Effort, attitude, and aggressiveness. That predator mindset we talk about. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. Did you know training for mindset is just as important as training for strength? It requires a daily practice. Today's guest, Gene Zanetti, offers concrete steps to get you started. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by two sponsors, Headspace and The Ready State. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by our friends Juliet and Kelly Starrett at The Ready State. Get a free trial and then save 10% for life by using the code SPARTAN10 when you register at The Ready State. Dot com. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash Spartan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. We are here for Spartan Up Podcast. Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan. I've got Gene Zanetti, another Italian. This guy, although he's an animal, he was a wrestler, he's obviously a big physical specimen. He's also a big mindset guy. He focuses on the stuff between the ears. So let's get it, let's get right into it, mindset, because you know, at Spartan, I think a lot of people look at what we do and say, oh, you know, my diet's not right, I'm not in shape yet. But but they don't realize that actually most of the game is right between the ears. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And Joe, you hit the nail on the head. The ancient Greeks even said spirit, mind, and body. But nowadays, we just kind of use that as a punchline or a catchphrase. Are we really attacking it from all three dimensions? We need a holistic approach, spirit, mind, and body. And you're absolutely right that if we're going to succeed, we have to maximize. We have to be capitalizing on everything that we have. So looking at it, that holistic approach, it's very mental. Everyone says our success in life is 90% mental. But then when you ask them about their preparation, they say 90% physical. I'm not the mathematician over here, but I know that's a problem. We need to bridge that gap. The physical is incredibly important, but so is the mental. Yeah, I think it's I think it's 90% um, mental and then the rest is in your head. <laughs> Sounds right. I think, I think, I mean, to wake up every morning and do the hard work, right? To avoid the junk food, um, to sign up and do the hard things, to take the cold showers, to live you know, a really high performing life. Um, the only thing that stands between you and that, it's in your mind. It's not like, oh, I don't have the time. I travel so much. I've got a family. You have two young kids. The Spartans, I mean, that's a phenomenal example of it. And I always say to people, you look at, use history, use the historical lessons to teach you. Don't reinvent the wheel. You look at the greatest, the greatest warriors of all time. The Spartans were among them. And you look at others like the samurai, the Aztecs, the U.S. military, what do they all have in common? They know what they believe, and they're willing to die for it. Well, those aren't physical attributes. That's mental and emotional. And a lot of people look at it as more like the soft side, kumbaya, hold hands in a circle and sing kumbaya. That couldn't be further from the truth. Mindset is a discipline. Being a positive person is a discipline. It doesn't necessarily mean you're smiling, laughing, or even having a great time. But it means you're having the discipline to focus on opportunities and focus on your day-to-day -day action plan like you do getting your kids up early in the morning so they're building good quality habits for life. That's, that's a mental battle. Anyone could wake up, but do you have the mental toughness to get out of bed and start that day? How about the New Zealand All Blacks? You know, where they do that haka before, before the battle, right? Gets their mind right. Uh, and that's, that's, an ancient, that's an ancient art. So, so I, think you're, I think you're right. And I think, we, I think we've lost some of that. Right now, our mental preparation for most of us in America is like watching Netflix. Yeah, we're, we're going down the tombs a little bit. So it's, it's really the art of a comeback now, as, as, as I tend to look at it. Getting back into it, looking at the lessons of history, studying the best people in the world. 
don't mess around with average people because you you know you you tend to be the the sum total or the average of the five people you tend to be with. If you look at the bell curve, most people end up where? In the middle. So if you just follow the crowd, your family, your friends, even if you're in a high performing group, you're still likely to end up in the middle. I want to study the most successful athletes in the world, the richest people in the world, the happiest people, the holiest people. Look at the top. How do they think? How do they act? That's going to look very different than the average. So if you want to be a one in a thousand person, you need to have some one in a thousand habits. And one in a thousand friends. One in a thousand friends. Go find, the, go find. I don't know if you find this, but for me, uh, you'd be surprised if you ask um, for advice from, from very, very successful people, no matter how you define them, uh, they typically are willing to help. You find that? They're usually the easiest ones to get a hold of. It's usually those people in the middle who are kind of like jockeying for position where, you know, maybe holding more of the grudge, being very territorial, defensive, very guarded. Usually successful people want to give back. They tend to be doers. They tend to be helpers. I mean, that's how they got to the top by being go-getters. So there's kind of like that, that unspoken code of pay it forward. I definitely see that a lot. All right. What are some things? Let's, get, let's bring it right back uh, to front and center. What are some things folks could do at home? Uh, aside from finding new friends that are high performers, aside from listening to podcasts or maybe reading books on high performers, what, what else could they do at home to get their mind straight? Train your brain just like you do your body. So just like if you wanted to get stronger, you need to go on a serious weightlifting program or if not weightlifting, some kind of strength and conditioning um, resistance, resistance plan, doing it on a weekly basis, usually on a multiple day a week basis. Same thing with our conditioning, right? You'd have to be doing your running, your aerodyne, your versa climber, whatever it is that you're doing, the row machine. You're on a program. You have a plan. If you don't fail, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? We all know the alliteration. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Anything you want to get good at, you have to address on a regular basis. If it's sports, a certain sport, you have to be doing it multiple times a week. So we say the same thing with mindset. It's doing your mindset training uh, once a week. That's why we put everything together the, the way it is. It's just having a systematic approach to getting better with our mindset, not just throwing a lot of stuff at the wall and hoping it sticks. We have to work on our mindset on a regular basis. I'll just give you some quick examples of certain things you could do. If you want to know what, what your best mindset is for performance, write down your three best performances or three best competitions. What were you thinking before and during those performances? Then find the common patterns, the underlying themes, the threads. Then do the same thing with your worst performances. What were you thinking before and during those competitions? And then find the underlying themes, patterns, and threads. And when you compare the two side by side, you see it's two completely different mindsets. We could talk about mindset here until we're blue in the face. But until someone does that exercise, then they prove it to themselves. It's not just being dictated from on high. It's them coming to the understanding organically. So that's one of the, one example of the 80 mindset lessons that we have. It's putting the pen to paper, not just listening to someone speak. I like that a lot. I think we should create an app that uh, before any kind of competition, no matter what competition you're going into, the app asks you five or 10 questions and then charts where your head was. I like that. Um, Absolutely. And then, right. And then, and then you got a performance, a post-performance uh, appraisal. It compares it to where your head was. Be yeah. And then you start to hopefully change those, those habits. I like that. All the material, we have all those materials built out. We just need to put that in the app form because every serious competitor or performer, even if a person's not an athlete, maybe you're a speaker or even someone who's giving a, a best man speech, maid of honor speech, right? You're in some kind of performance setting. A student is taking a test, the SATs, the whatever, the, the ACTs. Okay, we have a pre-performance checklist, making sure you're doing those things. And it's gearing your mind towards away from the outcome, not focusing on winning or losing your statistics, the records, the rankings, the seedings, the predictions, all that stuff. Forget about it. Throw that out. Effort, attitude, and aggressiveness, that predator mindset we talk about. So we, you go through that checklist before your competition. We tell all of our athletes to do that. And then after the competition, we have a match evaluation. So that's now focusing on how exactly you did in that performance, that competition based on effort, attitude, and performance. Not what you placed, not what your statistics were, not what the records are or anything like that, but not whether you won or, won or lost, but what did, how did you do with factors in your control? And so what, what are people, when they fail, 
what are you finding? Like the most common threads, like what, what mistakes were they making? Prey mindset. When we talk about that great analogy, you look at the animal kingdom, there are certain animals that are predator, some are prey. And you could tell the difference by looking at their eyes. Predator animals, lions, tigers, bears, their eyes are on the front of their head. They're focused on what they can control. They're focused on their end goal. So we say eyes on the front like to hunt. The prey animals, squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, deer, you know, we probably have some hunters that are watching the call. Their eyes are on the side of their head because they need to make sure they don't get eaten. So just like we say eyes on the front like to hunt, we say eyes on the side like to hide. And to your point, when you see people fail, generally speaking, almost always, it has to do with the prey mindset, focusing on the eyes on the side, looking around, not wanting to let other people down, focusing too much on the outcome, focusing too much on external factors that are outside of their control. And not only are you more likely to blow the biggest performance of your life, you're more likely to be depressed, anxious, hooked on drugs, and have all kinds of mental problems that go along with it. So for mental health and for performance success, you need to adopt that predator mindset of effort, attitude, aggressiveness, preparation, lifestyle. You're right there. You're not getting caught up in all the crap going on around you, comparing yourself to other people, wasting your time worrying about how other people are viewing you. Am I living up to other people's expectations? That's all garbage. And that's what most people are focusing on when they fail. Boy, I agree with that. And I love the, I love the eyes on the prize right, right in front. That's right. Um, eyes on the front like to hunt. Eyes on the side like to hide. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by our friends, Juliet and Kelly Starrett at The Ready State. In case you don't know Kelly, he's a doctor of physical therapy and the world's leading mobility coach. In fact, Kelly has worked with everyone from Olympic gold medalists and NFL quarterbacks to UFC champions and Navy SEALs. And he's given Joe DeSena a little advice, too. We're happy to announce that now anyone can experience what it's like to work with Kelly, thanks to his virtual mobility coach platform. With VMC, it's like you have a virtual Kelly Starrett in your pocket. Whether you want to speed up your recovery after a hard training session so you're ready to go again the next day, improve your range of motion to help reduce the risk of injury, get targeted warm-up mobilizations to help you get around the most difficult obstacles in training or during a race, or just get the most out of every workout, Virtual Mobility Coach can help. In fact, nearly 17,000 everyday athletes trust VMC with their mobility training and recovery. And now we can give you a chance to join them with a special deal just for Spartan Up listeners. Right now, you can try VMC totally free for two whole weeks without paying a penny. And after you get your free trial, save 10% off your membership for life. To claim this deal, go to thereadystate.com and use the code SPARTAN10 when you register for your free trial. That's thereadystate.com and the code SPARTAN10. You'll get two weeks to try VMC for free and see if it's right for you. And then, with this special deal, you'll save 10% on your membership for life. But hurry, the deal expires June 1st. So one more time, that's thereadystate.com and the code SPARTAN10. We'll be right back to the interview, but first I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Headspace. Meditation sounds great, right? So many of the guests we interview on the podcast have talked about the benefits. Mark Devine, Andrew Huberman, behavioral psychologist Rebecca Heiss, Ariana Huffington, but it's not easy. Today's sponsor, Headspace, is changing that. You probably tried meditation before and it didn't work, right? Or maybe you felt like you were doing it wrong. If mental health is part of your plan, and it should be, you owe it to yourself to try Headspace. Imagine your own little pocket-sized guide that helped you sleep better, focus better, and perform at a higher level. It exists, and if you have 10 minutes, Headspace can change your life. Meditation can help with burnout, with stress, even mood. Headspace has data to back it up. Check out the numbers. Four weeks of Headspace can increase focus by 14%. Only three weeks of use has been shown to cut aggression to negative feedback by a whopping 57%. That's huge. And with Headspace, you can be 28% less sad in just 10 days. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash spartan. That's headspace.com slash spartan. And you'll get a free one-month trial 
with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal they offer right now. So just do it. Head to headspace.com slash Spartan and check it out. Okay, back to the interview. Gene, that's exactly why I fell in love with wrestling. You know, I was not a wrestler uh, growing up, but with, when I saw my, my boys wrestle and I looked around the room, you know, hot room, sweating, enormous amount of preparation, practice, uh, and, then, and then you get beaten on the mat and you got to start all over, do it again. You've got to optimize your weight. Maybe you don't eat for two days. I mean, it is the ultimate warrior sport. And um, so much so that I, I, I want to start putting on, I want to start putting on some, some uh, wrestling events. We're going we're gonna to put on our first ever down in um, Jacksonville, Florida, May 20th, uh, which you're coming to. You're going to have a whole mindset corner. Maybe what we'll do is we'll set up the mindset corner like a prison with like loud noises and everything. We'll just completely um, stress the kids out and then you got to get them straight. Absolutely. And it should be like that. We do need to harden up the perception of mindset because it is, it's tough. And no one at the top is not mentally strong. I'll rephrase that in a positive way of saying it. Everyone at the top is mentally strong. Not everyone at the top is physically strong. Of course, most of them are, but there's no one at the top who isn't mentally strong. Everyone has that mental toughness. So we need to harden up that exterior. That's real important. And you know, I'm not surprised that you found wrestling as your sport because with that whole Spartan mindset, wrestlers are the modern Spartans. They just are. Like you said, it's so holistic. The mindset, the nutrition, the going to sleep on time, the technique, the strength, the conditioning, it's being the total package. I mean, you could say the MMA fighters and the UFC fighters, we work with some people in the UFC on their mindset for sure, but most people are not going to be involved in MMA, right? Most people aren't going to go into that as a career. But a lot of people can go into wrestling because it's a sport available in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, and so forth. So that is the modern Spartan. And we are pumped for your event. We're going to be over there. We're excited. We're going to um, be promoting it as much as we can on our end because we think you're doing great things. We've seen you do great things all through the years. I remember talking to one of your boys. I think he was, he might have been eight or nine at the time where we had it. That was probably in 2013, 2014, something like that. Yeah, I remember that. I, I'm listening to you now. I got to get you talking to them again. I, I mean, most of your most of your uh, customers, most of your audience is, is what age? Uh, you know, we, we really do have youth through the through the Olympic team and the professional athletes. Most of them tend to be middle school, high school, uh, no, middle school, high school. And yeah, definitely a lot of college, too. But middle school, high school is the most I'd say some of our most serious wrestlers. They started when they were about sixth grade, 11, 12 years old. We started working with them on a weekly basis. And like I said, it's not, they're micro learning sessions. It's not going on and on for an hour, hour and a half, trying to be like a therapist, sitting people down on the couch. We get it. Kids have schoolwork. They have their training, their other training they have to do. They have, they have life going on. So we're not giving them homework. What we're doing is that 20 to 30 minute micro learning session, learn one mindset tool a day. We break it into different mental muscles, just like there's different muscles in the body. You could have strong legs, but weak arms. You could have a strong neck. You could have a weak grip. Same thing with mindset. You could be highly motivated, but then you wet the bed in competition. You don't do well with relaxing under pressure. On the other hand, you could have someone who is very strong with confidence, but they're getting into problems off the wrestling mat, smoking, drinking, doing drugs in a bad relationship, staying up too late, and they might not be as strong with goal setting. So all these different mental muscles, we like to give this kid a, system, a, systemized, a systematic, organized mindset program that they're doing on a regular basis. 20 to 30 minutes a week. And, and down, at, down at our uh, event on, on May 20th, um, can we do some things with the kids over the weekend that will really move the needle? We, we should do it, and I'm happy to do it. It'd be, it'd be real exciting because it's uh, once they see, just like that first mindset exercise I told you about, once they see just how mental it is, once they put the pen to paper for the first time, not just listening to a coach lecture, they realize just how relevant it is, not only to their wrestling career, but their success in school and life. So, yeah, we're, we're happy to give you whatever it is that you want to do with the group. We've, we've 80 different mindset workshop, uh, workshops that we do with people. So we're happy to do what you think is best. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I think all the kids should, uh, should know that component of it. And a lot of kids I'm finding in wrestling, surprisingly, they don't know. They have no um, understanding of the nutrition component. So... Um, it, it is a, a three-legged stool. Oh, 
That's right. And that's why in our goal setting series, a lot of people just look at, oh, have a long term goal and have a short term goal. It's even more than that. It's having an action plan. Well, how do you build out an action plan if you don't know the components of success to the sports, to the sport itself? Right. So if you want to get stronger, you need to do a needs analysis of your sport. What muscles do you need for your sport? Right. And usually all of them. Right. But different priority order. Same thing with your action plan. Technique, mindset, strength, nutrition, rest and recovery, your tendons, tendon strength, your rehab, your prehab. A lot of people don't focus on that. And that's why they're getting hurt. Your plyometrics, your explosive power. I don't know if I mentioned rest and recovery already. That's like nine, <laughs> that's nine different dimensions. We just rattled off the top of our head. Are the athletes, do they have a systematic plan for each one of those areas to build the explosive power, the tendon strength, the nutrition, like you just said? Or the mindset. If you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail. And there's someone training right now to kick your butt, right? For us, people are training to kick our butts in business. For the athletes, someone's training to kick your butt in sports. So you've got to be ready. You've got to be organized. Agreed. I love it. I love it. We, we, uh, I think even the Spartans out there that are attacking our courses uh, all around the world could use a little bit of this. And you know, you know, the shame is, um, you know, we've had 10 million, 10 million people through the system, but there's 7 billion people on earth. There's so many people that just can't even get to go, get to start, get to you know raise their hand and say, I'm in, I'm gonna try something new, I'm gonna get off the couch. So um, who knows, maybe you and I could go visit Biden. Maybe we should go talk to Biden and say, look, we gotta add a little bit of Spartan to, you know, we wanna make this country uh, you know, great, or the best it can be, what are we gonna do? Uh, we, gotta, we gotta start waking people up early. They probably all need to do burpees, take cold showers. Do a little mindset training with uh, Zanetti and team. That's right. We can change a country overnight, right? Hey, we could use it too. If we need it, they could use it too. We could all use it. You know, the number one motivator, I'm told, for a human being, and it makes sense, is the avoidance of discomfort. Like that's what kept us from falling off a cliff, getting eaten by a lion, freezing in the cold. We just avoid uncomfortable situations. Now, I know there's a few of us that uh, go out and run into uncomfortable situations. But by and large, uh, we avoid uncomfortable situations. But that, that teaches helplessness. That makes us softer. I think in terms of our mindset program, the different worksheets that we have to build these tools, exactly what you're saying. So you're right. When you look at motivation, a lot of people just look at that as a rah-rah pep talk. Okay, that's great, but put that on the side. The root word of motivation is motive. Understanding the motives of human behavior, and you just nailed it. There's two main motives, two big drivers, desire for pleasure and fear of pain. And usually for most people, like you said, the fear of pain tends to be a more powerful motivator. So people need to understand how they are mentally linking pain and pleasure to exercise, to nutrition, to their schoolwork, their studies, to their personal relationships, to speaking in front of people. If you don't understand how pain and pleasure is working in your brain, you can't make those changes. But once you understand that, then it's easy to make the changes because you create new pain and pleasure links to different to, to things you're trying to work on in your mindset. I hope that makes sense. So that's like one of the exercises we give them. And also, as you said, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. One of our mental toughness lessons, we do this. It's a 30-day courage log. We tell everyone to do one thing every day that scares you or pushes yourself outside of your comfort zone. Obviously not doing anything like stupid or anything, but... But maybe a few things are borderline stupid, but the idea is you're, you're actively going out of your way one, ever, once a day for a month for 30 straight days. And then after those 30 days are up, you see that you've pushed yourself through discomfort, through fear, through anxiety. And you say, hey, look, 30 examples. I did it before. I could do it again. And then it just becomes part of your life. Every day you have your courage of the day. For me, you know, I flipped it around probably for you the same thing it's become more uncomfortable for me not to do the work. You know what I mean? I don't want to be embarrassed and, and be a fraud and not do the hard things. So the more I say it, the more I believe it, the more I internalize it, that just becomes the road that I have to take. Um, it's kind of like, I love this saying, the only bad workout is the one you don't do, right? Whoever had a bad workout, you could be exhausted. It could be raining outside. Somehow you're like, that was awesome. That's right. Well, what you did there, if you see what happened, you've at some point in your life, you've mentally linked pain, not with the exercise that most people have, but you've linked pain to not exercising, not pushing yourself, 
a lot of people do that naturally. What we're trying to do is make people consciously aware of how high level performers like yourself switch it up mentally. So it's some people do it naturally. And most of us, we just need to learn how to do it. And once you put the pen to paper and do the exercises, the, the changes come pretty fast. All right. Uh, give me, give me three quick things that could start first thing in the morning, three actionable things that folks can do to harden their mindset. All right. So number one, is to make the most important thing the most important thing. It's got to start with prayer. Everyone says be the total package, spirit, mind, and body, but how much time are you working on to being spiritually strong? So starting with prayer and going along with that directly is gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. The opposite of, de the opposite of depression and anxiety is not happiness. It's an attitude of gratitude and thankfulness. So remind yourself around the clock of what you're thankful for. Number two, being aggressive and relentless, having an attitude that you're going to err on the side of gutsy. At some point during the day, probably multiple times, you're going to be faced with a choice. You're going to get that feeling in your gut. And am I going to go for it? Am I going to go all out or am I going to hold back? Nine times out of 10, action beats inaction. You learn lessons by being active. So be a hustler, be a go-getter. That's a decision you make, not in the moment, but early in the day. Early in the day, you make that decision. I'm going to have Err on the side of gutsy when the moment of truth comes. And number three, having the attitude of I have no fear of losing or making mistakes. And we recommend what you would do in the morning. You wake up, you look at yourself in the mirror, you say it out loud. Sometimes your mouth needs to teach your brain. Sometimes your mouth needs to teach your heart. You need to say it before you actually get in those situations. You say, I have no fear of losing or making mistakes. And at first it might seem corny or cheesy, but after a while you're looking at yourself you're hearing yourself say it, you start to believe it, you start to internalize it. It's no different than Muhammad Ali saying over and over, I'm the greatest of all time. He said that before he was ever the heavyweight champion of the world. Very little difference you doing that. So daily basis, start with prayer and gratitude. Two, make the choice now. You're going to err on the side of gutsy. And number three, look yourself dead in the eye in the mirror and say out loud, I have no fear of losing or making mistakes. That'll get you off to the right start. Absolutely, positively guaranteed. I'm going to start doing that right now. You're the man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining. Happy to help. Thank you for having me. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by our friends Juliet and Kelly Starrett at The Ready State. Get a free trial and then save 10% for life by using the code SPARTAN10 when you register at thereadystate.com. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash Spartan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up! Podcast. Spartan Up! is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and LaRuta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics, to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time.